Hello and good evening. Welcome everybody to this evening's webinar podcast as well. Uh, brought to you by Munster Bovine and Progressive Genetics. This will be a one hour webinar and it will be cover how to create a demand for your beef calves in 2024. Um, Within Munster Bovine and within Progressive Genetics, we are seeing a massive increase in the use of dairy beef. And we will go through this evening what that looks like when you do increase the use of dairy beef genetics in your herd. So what to look for within the DBI, what's important to improve the value of your calf crop. Uh, tonight's presenters and panelists are uh, Rose Gooling. She will cover bulls and the selection of genetics that's available from both Munster Bovine and Progressive Genetics. Rose's role is a beef program manager in NCBC, which is the National Cattle Breeding Centre. Um, we'll also will have Shane Lean, who is our technical sales manager uh, for Progressive Genetics. Um, and then we have Stephen Connolly, who will kick off the show tonight with his first presentation. And he will cover, I suppose, what his role is within ABP. He, he um, focuses on developing of ways to increase calf value and therefore the beef value within animals. So he's done a lot of research there, but we'll go into that um, with Stephen very soon. I'm yourself, I'm your host for the evening. My name is John Tobin and I'm the Sales and Advisory Manager at Munster Bovine. So Stephen, if you can join us there, it'd be really good. Thanks, John. Great to, great to be on and I hope uh, Hope we get plenty of questions. Uh, not too hard, I, I hope. <laughs> so, uh, will I stick up my presentation and see where we go? Is that the best thing, John? Yeah, go for it. Perfect. So, you should be able to see my screen now. Fingers crossed. You can see it, John, can you? I can do, yeah. Yeah, so go. look, I'm not going to spend too long, I suppose, just a few slides in the I suppose the importance of animal breeding to a profitable dairy farm, but also to a beef farm. OK, um, so I suppose start off with the challenges uh, which may be on the horizon in 2024. Um, look, the whole export of calves show that that is a risk, I suppose, to any dairy business. Um, so there's also, I suppose, there's changes come along the line. There's the potential of genotype and the national herd. So how is that going to impact uh, you know, the sale of calves? Uh, and I suppose on the beef, on the beef side, like it's, I suppose where, where are we going? I suppose it's always, uh, it's always difficult to, you know, depends on supply and demand. I suppose on dairy farms, like, like also on beef farms, it's about rising costs. So you know, there's loads of challenges there, but I suppose it's important about where there's challenges, there's, there's opportunities, okay? So is animal breeding really important, I suppose, for a, a beef farmer first? Okay, so when I go to buy my calves in the March or direct from farm, which calf do I buy? And a lot of times I hear from even from a dairy farmer, when a beef farmer comes in, he doesn't ask about the genetics, even though I jump a dairy farmer might be using the right bulls or the higher beef quality bulls. But I suppose the key thing is, you know, it's very important to start asking that question because when you're standing looking at calves in a pen or in the mart, how do you know if they're from Mr. Muscles or, or how do you know they're from this poor bull here? Like so. And what we'll show throughout the presentation is the importance when you're buying your calves to ask what is the genetics of that calf, what is the carcass weight, uh, you know, what's the beef sub index on the DVI, what's the carcass weight of that sire, you know, and how, you know, how that impacts uh, on farm profit. For the dairy farmer, and again, we hear this said that calf values, you know, the calf value isn't worth that much, you know, it's a small percentage of the total uh, of the total profitability of a dairy system. But it's very important, I'm sure, as dairy farmers, you'll be well aware of this. If you have a beef farmer that comes every second Saturday to you to buy your calves and that he comes again next year, so having that repeat customer, like that has a huge impact to the profitability of your system. Because for starters, if he didn't come, so these calves are going to be longer on your farm. So, and again, that's a busy time of the year, February and March. So you might be tight on calf space. So having a farmer coming every two weeks, you know, taking the pressure off labor on the farm, but also you know, your sheds, your housing has a huge impact. So 
I suppose anything you can do to build that relationship with the beef farmer that the calf was off the farm at three weeks of age and that he comes back next year is hugely important. And even from a stress factor, to know that you know, Joe Bloggs is going to come and buy your calves is worth a lot to your system. So it can have real value uh, to, to the profit of a dairy of a dairy system. That's really interesting here, Stephen, because it's hard to put a monetary value on that. But like, you know, a guy coming in like, and you only need four pence to keep your heifer or your calves going instead of eight because someone's coming in every second week. He's saving you a day going to the mart at the time of the year. You don't have a day to go to the mart. Like, it's massive, isn't it? Like, you know, it has a it has a huge impact. Like, so it's definitely that that you know that your calf is going to be, you know, it's going to be every Saturday or, you know, that this calf is going to is going to Joe Blogs is a huge impact. And, and even you know, definitely the stress one is a, is is definitely a big is a big one. Like because look, we're all stretched in the in the spring. Like so, having that there, and so really anything you can do to help that, whether it be first of all the calf getting the colostrum, but I suppose the decision you're going to make in the next week or two on which, you know, which AI sire you use, it's going to have a big impact that I suppose that your calves are, are going to be a higher genetic merit there for more marketable than maybe your neighbour down the road. So I think that's really, really important. Like, so it's, and hopefully we'll, we'll show that throughout. And now is the time to be thinking of that. So I suppose as a beef farmer, which calf do I buy? Okay. Do I calf, buy calf A, B or C? Um. Next year, we won't get into it, but potentially if the herd is genotyped, the CBV, which you won't talk about tonight, will be on these, will be basically, which is used to identify the most profitable animals will be in the marks, but at the minute it's not. So which calf do I buy? And it's very hard to tell the quality of a calf at three weeks of age. So I'm just taking, if I, I'm a beef farmer and I buy calf A over calf B, okay? And I slaughter them at 24 months of age, okay? So I finished my cattle at 24 month system. But one of them grades a P plus on the on the confirmation grid, uh, and one of them grades an O plus. Okay, so we'll take these are Angus or Herford calves. Okay, so three on both the same weight, but one's P plus and one's an O plus. What's that worth in terms of, of value to the beef farmer? So I'm just going to use a base price of five euros twenty. My P plus animal will get no quality assurance, which is your boar beer. Uh, he'll get no breed bonus, and he'll be down thirty cent on the grid. So the base animal is for an R, but this animal is a P plus, is 30 cents. So we'll have a total price per kilo of 490 a kilo. Whereas calf B performs to be an O plus, which would be a good, good grade for your, for your Angus. Base price of 520, he'll get his QA bonus of 20 cents, his breed bonus of 20 cents, and he'll only be reduced down the grade by 12 cents. Okay, so he's a total price of 548, so nearly 60 cents a kilo more. Okay, and in terms of carcass value, you know, we're looking at an animal worth 16.44 versus an animal worth 14.70, which is 174 euros. Okay, so buying that right calf, John, uh, you know, day one can have a huge impact, but they might look very similar as calves. And so that's probably what led ABP. So back in 2014, now we've seen the quotas were going to be abolished. We were going to get more beef calves from the dairy herd, but it was something we were hearing a lot about that the carcass confirmation was reducing. Um, so, and that was having a big impact on, I suppose, to, uh, our, our beef farmers who are finishing these animals. So I suppose from there, we, we set up a, a trial farm in County Carlow, and its aim was basically to look at genetics and the role genetics can play to the economic and environmental sustainability of uh, beef production uh, through animal breeding and farming practices. So in collaboration with ICBF, Chagas and the leading AI companies, uh, a program called the Gene Ireland Dairy Beef Program was developed, and its aim was to identify the most suitable beef bull genetics for crossing on the dairy herd. So they must be they must be an easy calving and short gestation, which is a win for the dairy farmer. Good carcass growth for the beef farmer, good feed efficiency, uh, and finish potentially younger. And then I suppose for the customer that they had a low carbon uh, and also that they had good eating quality. Okay, um, so that was the aim of the program. So so. I suppose how the program works, ICBF uh, working with the leading AI companies such as you know, Munster and Progressive identified the most suitable young bulls. Uh, semen is distributed out into dairy farms. Okay, um, the dairy farm must record the, the calving difficulty, the station, all that information. Um, when the calves are three weeks of age, uh, we purchase four hundred and twenty of these calves. So we buy twenty calves per bull. We buy Angus, Hereford, Limousine, Belgian Blue. Um, 
Then on the farm, what we do is we'd say they're reared from three weeks of age. So we're getting all their weight data, any health incidents. All that data is recorded and sent to ICBF and it's used in the evaluations when you look at your catalogs, your beef catalogs, all that data is there. Um, a proportion of these animals then go to Tully to measure feed intake. So how much feed it takes to put on that kilo of weight gain. And also in Tully, which is the National Feed Intake Centre, it measures methane data, okay? So what we're trying to do is create an animal, create bulls that produce animals that have you know, a win for the dairy farmer with easy calf and short gestation, a win for the beef farmer, but also that they have a good eating experience for the for the for the, our customers. Okay. So what's the results telling us? Okay. So this is comparing progeny. So we buy probably twenty calves per bull, um, a steer heifer system. Okay. But if I compare within the Angus breed, if I compare. Would say progeny from the worst performing Angus bull versus the best performing Angus bull. Okay. And at the same age, okay, we got 46 kilos heavier carcasses. Okay. But exactly the same age, we got 46 kilos heavier carcasses, which is worth over 200 euros. Okay. And they were treated exactly the same way, which is really important. Uh, they come from a number of different herds, so it takes out the impact of the cow. Uh, and there's 200 euros to be got. So it's huge the impact of, of genetics. Look, I suppose from the carbon point of view, there's a 13% reduction as well. So I suppose your, your beef farmer finishing 100 head could be worth in carcass value 20,000. He's finishing 50 animals, so it's worth 10,000. What is so, that, Steve? Is that just genetics then? Or is it something else? Or is it something else? It's down to, so basically the, the semen is used across a number of different herds. And again, look, we're picking extremes here, like so, but it's just using AI sire, so semen A versus B. So Semen costs the same money. The animals, like we, on the trial farm in Sport and John, we buy the good, the bad, and the ugly. So it's a proper trial. We're not buying all the good, you know, it's, it's a mix. Uh, they're treated exactly the same way. And that's what we found on the trial farm. And look, I suppose to give you a bit of background on this data-wise, on the trial farm, we put through over 4,000 animals. There's 70,000 live wits. Uh, within the program, there's been 195 bulls progeny tested. So roughly 20, 20 animals per, per bull. And to date in Ireland, there's 384,000 cows born from them bulls. So there's lots and lots of data. Like So I suppose the decision that you make now in the reading season will have a huge impact in the beef characteristics of uh, of your calf crop in 2024. Like, and it'll have a huge impact to, I suppose, the marketability of them cows, but also to the profitability for the beef farmer. And it's important to say similar calving difficulty. That's really, really important. Better beef quality does not mean harder calf you can get both and rose will touch on that how to do that so really really important so look i'm just going to play a short video uh showing two heifers that we had on the farm last year it's three minutes it's a bit cringy if i'm honest with you some of the information is a little bit old but i think it just really shows when you when you see these animals in the in the factory that you see the difference in carcass so it's so really really important so we'll just play that video and hope it plays john all right perfect perfect Behind me is two Angus heifers on the ABP trial farm. These heifers have been on the farm since they were three weeks of age. They're bred from the dairy herd. And what we want to get out of this video is to show the importance of animal breeding and genetics. So if we take our first heifer here, she's by AI Bull uh, Cool Rain Patriarch. Um, he has a DVI of 75 euro. But when we look within the DVI, his B sub index is 43. So that'll tell me that, you know, what is his progeny going to be like for carcass weight, conformation, fat, and I suppose carcass value. This heifer here is by Steel Picasso. Uh, he has a similar DVI of 68 euro, but when we look at the B sub index of that bull, it's 22. So considerable difference between, I suppose, the genetic merit for, the, for beef between the two sires. And I suppose just to remind people, like for our Advantage Beef Programme, the minimum genetic merit standard for calves being born in 2023 is 35 euro or greater. So calves from this bull here won't qualify for the bonus. This heifer is one week uh, younger than this heifer and is a trial farm. So they've been treated exactly the same way. So they've got the same, we'll say, rear the same on milk, the same you know, grazing, same farm, and the same finishing. So, so as first up on the scales um, is uh, the heifer by Cool Rain Patriarch, and you can see she's weighing 634 kilos. 
Whereas our heifer here by Steel Picasso is 492, so you know, 140 kilo difference. So when these animals are processed in ABP Slaney uh, in the coming days, we'll be able to see, you know, what is the difference in their in their carcass weight, their conformation, and their uh, I suppose carcass value. So it really should highlight the importance and the role that animal genetics and selecting that right calf can have in a in a profitable and more sustainable uh, dairy beef production system. So following on from a previous video of our two heifers on the ABP demo farm, um, today we're in ABP Slaney where the two heifers now been processed and we're going to talk through how they performed. First carcass here is by the sire Cool Rain Patriarch AA5280 and the second carcass here is by Steel Picasso AA5407. You can see they're similar enough carcass confirmation, they've good confirmation. But when we look at it, this heifer here graded an R an R equals, and this heifer here graded an R minus. So, you know, still good performance from this animal, but slightly poorer grade. Fat score, which is important, two lovely carcasses. You can see very similar carcass, uh, carcass fat. This heifer here just graded a fat score of four, versus this heifer here, she graded a fat score of a, a three plus. But very little difference, you know, two very suitable in-spec uh, cattle. But then if we look at the big one, what's the difference in carcass weight? The carcass weight of this, this animal here, 355 kilos of carcass weight, versus the carcass weight of this heifer is 267 kilos. So that's 88 kilo difference in carcass weight between the two heifers. So it really highlights when you're buying calves, you need to start asking the question, what is the sire of that calf? Don't just look at the colour of the calf alone. So ask about genetics. The new CVV is coming. Start asking about the CVV because it has huge impact in so, the economics of a dairy beef system. So you can hear me again, John, can you? Can do, Stephen. That was an impressive video. Hey, do you ever think of uh, doing an audition for Nationwide or something? You're very good at standing at the side and then moving into the centre of the screen. I'm just, I was just thinking that it would be cheaper for you, John, to to just play the video. I'd say than to have me <laughs> present tonight. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I think it really shows it. Like seeing is believing, and when we bring farmers to the farm. You know, you can present stuff all you want, but when you see it in front of you, it's huge. Like sort of, and yeah, and just taking that that awesome. example, it, it like. We we'll just look at them. I said one of them, one of the, if you look at the sires, I suppose the, the heifer from the poorer sire, he's minus 1.8 kilos for carcass on his index, whereas Cooler and Patriarch is 9.3 kilos of carcass. So the breed average for an Angus, you know, sire, an Angus bull is around six kilos. He's well above breed average, whereas he's well behind. So I suppose if you're a beef farmer buying calves from a, a we'll say from an AI sire that's, you know, that is good for a carcass, high carcass weight, is really important and same for a dairy farmer when you're picking that straw if your AI man calls out tomorrow you know don't just say use an angus ask her on with a high carcass figure like so so but like i was using this example again 88 kilos again like in terms of money it's 500 euros now that's extremes okay and um, but when we compared the progeny from the two bulls roughly 20 calves per bull that we finished last year there was a 50 kilo difference in in, 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 in carcass weight like so it's worth a lot, a lot of money for, for the beef farmer, okay? Um, so, so Stephen, you're back to your 100 cow herd, or you're 100 beef, 100 head of beef, finishing there at 50. You're looking at, at about 40,000 euros there. Yeah, and look, this is extremes, like, so it is. Like, yeah. So let's talk, but still, we all, as beef farmers, we all have one animal, a couple of animals that really don't yeah. perform, that are way down the weight, you know, them light carcs at 220, 230. And you wish, Jesus, if I'd less of them and I'd more of the animal that's 300 kilos or 350 kilos, the better. And like, it's important to say that's not a bad weight. That's a good weight. Actually, not a bad. There's, there can be a lot. A lot of these Angus heifers can be a lot lighter than that. So it could yeah. be even bigger differences. So it's really about when you're buying the calf, the genetics can play, play a huge role. Like so. Sort of, so um, so that's I suppose it's just really important. 500 euro. So. I suppose just to touch on again, and again, we're in changing times, and I suppose we're just challenging or changing. I suppose where there's challenges, there's opportunities. So that's, that's my opinion, like so. So I suppose the other thing, I suppose what's going to drive, I suppose, uh, beef farmers buying cows and genetics. I suppose one thing is uh, within ABP, and there's other 
there's other uh, systems or programs out there. Uh, we coming next year, we'll be rewarding our beef farmers with a, a bonus uh, and one within an advantage beef program, it's called, and it's 20 cent bonus, but there's a minimum genetic merit standard for the calves going from the dairy herd and from the sucker herd. So again, that's going to create the beef farmer asking the question for the dairy farmer to use the right genetics or a dairy farmer that's you know, keeping his stock like so it is, that he's going to use a slightly different bull. So you know, it is going to, farmers are going to be rewarded for that. Like. Plus, if you use the right bull, you, know, you also have the extra weight to, as well. Like. So, so look, take home messages. To me, there's potential, the potential challenges coming in 2024 calving season. Beef genetics can add value to a dairy business with more marketable calves. So if you can move them off the farm with your trees of age and you know, you know the labor benefit, that repeat customer is huge, really, really important. Um, and so building the relationship between the dairy and beef farmer is key. It's something we want to do more with, is linking dairy farmers that have good cow type, using the right beef bulls uh, to link them to our, to our beef farmers. And, and we need that. And I suppose as dairy farmers, knowing what your customer wants, whether it's a breed or whatever, I think that's really, really important. And I suppose, look, Rose is going to touch on this, the importance of using a you know, beef bull team. Um, and I suppose looking at, I suppose, the, I suppose the carcass weight is a big one. And you're selecting them, them your, your AI bulls, using bulls that you know, have the calving level that you're suit, that's suitable for your herd, but using good a good carcass weight bull is really, really important. So that's that's all for me, um, John, uh, unless there's, you have any questions. I'm just going to stop sharing. Whistle stop tour. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. So questions will be at the end. So if you have any questions there, throw them in the QA and uh, we'll go through them there at the end. Um, I enjoyed that. The piece I took away from that, well, like it's all going to say, you know, you're gonna get, get a few bob more the mart or something like that for a better quality camp. But if you're moving them on faster and you're saving yourself a building, you're saving yourself cars to feed, you know, labor's not easy to get anymore. Good labor is definitely not easy to get. Bad labor is even hard to get now these days, the way things are gone. There is a real value in that. And then the other piece I took away from that is uh that's a beef farmer like look, we throw 40, we throw 40,000, throw 20,000 euros. But even if you're making say 15,000 euros, that's it, that's the difference of a, of somebody who's working a five-day job as well with the beef farm. They're turning around and they're um they can take an extra day a week off, like you know, and it's easier to spend the time in the farm, life is better and all that. Just by picking better genetics, we're not asking them to change the world, we're just asking them to change the straw, like in order to achieve that. It's massive. No, it, and it's and it's within your control as well. That's another thing. Like True. price and all these different things, environments outside your control. This is like even if you're buying ten calves a year. That same example, them two bulls, you'd have to buy an extra two animals to get the same weight. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, so like, or you, know, you have less animals with the same output. Like, so it's really, really, really important. Like, so it is. And and really, what we want to get to is actually we we link some dairy and beef farmers up. Uh, one dairy farm came out with the catalog to the beef farmer. Put it on top of the Jeep. He said, "You tell me what bulls I should use next year, and I'll use them if you buy my calves." Like that's what you want to get more integration. Like so that that yeah. dairy farmer uses the right genetics linked with the beef farmer. John, so that's what we want to want to get to. Like so that so uh, and look, everyone has to have a win out with the dairy farmer and the beef farmer. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Um. Thanks for that, Stephen. Stephen, you'll be joining us later on for the Q and A at the end. Um. For now, we will um, I think we'll go over to Rose. Rose, can you please come on there and drop your presentation? Hi, good evening. Um, good evening, everybody. So, Rose, will you start off just giving a bit of a background about what you're at too, what your your role is within NCBC? What does it mean to be a beef program manager? Yeah, so I run the beef program for um Munster Bovine and Progressive Genetics. So um. Tonight, we're just talking about uh, specifically dairy beef. So um, what do we do in the breeding program? Um, we, we select sires um, every year. We test those sires. And then we um, once we get all the data back in and we have massive records on, our, um, on all our bulls and we promote the bulls then that are proven to be superior genetically and superior on fertility. And that's basically what the program um, is all about. So what I'll go through tonight is the offering available from um, Monster Bovine and Progressive Genetics. Um, 
um, the sires available for use on dairy cows. But throughout the entire presentation, regardless of what breed we're talking about, these are really the things that we're always trying to achieve in the, in the dairy beef program. So security of calving yeast, and we achieve that by having highly proven bulls with a lot of records. Short gestation, again, highly proven bulls with uh, a lot of uh, calving records. Beef value maximized. So we get the beef value um, data from the carcass data. So we have a lot of carcass records in our bulls as well. And finally, highly fertile semen. And this, that is, this is something we're really, really strong on in Munster Bovine and Progressive Genetics because we recognize the fact that you want to get your cows in calf and you want to get them in calf to the right bull. And, uh, and that's basically what the, the whole program encompasses. Get your cow in calf, get her in calf to the right bull. So just following on from Stephen there, um, it, it's pretty obvious that uh, better genetics leads to a higher value calf and ultimately a higher value carcass. But as a dairy herd owner, there's a lot of information out there. How do you find these sires? How do you select them? So what I'll go through tonight is what data to look at, um, where to find the data, what the important data is, and then I'll finally talk about the bulls that we have available. What beef bulls to put in your dairy herd? I suppose the first thing we all do is we decide which breed we're going to use because we all have breed preferences and our customers have breed preferences as well. So once you've decided on, and you might decide to use um, multiple breeds, um, depending on the parity of the cow you're using it on. So once you've decided on your breeds, divide up your females that you're going to put in calf into maiden heifers, second calvers, and then cows and mature cows. Because you will, you will need much easier calving bulls on your maiden heifers than you will on your cows and mature cows, for example. And we also always want to aim for minimum calving difficulty. But we also must recognize that the more mature cows have greater calving ability. So we can use high, more difficult bulls on them and still not have any trouble. And that's what we really, really want to achieve to maximize the quality of the full calf crop. So once you've decided on the level of calving um, difficulty that you're happy with, um, then look at the carcass weight and the beef sub-index. Because we all know if we're selling stores and selling to the factory, carcass weight is what it's all about. We need weight. And uh, Stephen clearly demonstrated that. So make sure to look at the carcass weight and look at the beef sub-index. And then when your calf is born, be sure to record the sire of the calf. Because when you record the sire of the calf, that lets your customer buyer know exactly the quality of genetics of the calf. And also then in the next few years, that information will be available on the mark boards as well, the commercial beef value, which is the beef genetics of that calf and how profitable that calf will be to take through to slaughter. So be sure to record the sire of the calf. That's a really important um, part of the exercise as well. So I'll go through the panels and the way we present them in our, in our catalogs. And I'll really focus on the important information to look at. So the first thing is calving ease. None of us want any trouble. So there are two calving ease figures um, available for dairy beef sires. So the first one is calving ease for dairy heifers. So this is the one you look at when you have maiden heifers. When you're looking at bulls for maiden heifers, look at the dairy heifer calving difficulty. If we're talking about cows, it's the dairy cow calving difficulty. Next is gestation length. And the gestation length is presented in days. The bigger the minus, the shorter the pregnancy. So at the end of the season, week four of the season, if you want to go in with your short gestation bulls, make sure there's the minus in front of the gestation figure. And the bigger the minus, the better. Carcass weight, that's presented in kilos. I would say even for maiden heifers bulls, try and go at least for five kilos. And if you look at our panel of bulls there, we've plenty of bulls available, plus 20 kilos in carcass. The beef sub index then. So, sorry, sorry, Ross. So plus 20 in carcass. And we we're looking there, Stephen was doing his presentation, was plus nine. Yes. So I suppose that bull is, is a couple of years old. They've, they've really come on now, haven't they? So. Oh, absolutely. Um, 
as our program is developing, we're finding more and more sires that are um, small when they're born and then they grow like mushrooms after that. And, that, and that's the sort of genetics that we're working with to achieve that. Okay. And um, the other really important thing about our program is because the usage of our top sires get, we have massive records. So we really know exactly what these bulls will do in your farm. Um, we have a massive amount of calving records and a massive amount of slaughter records. So I just have an example of a panel here um, underneath. So what is the important information to look at? So this is a dairy heifer panel. So look at the um, dairy heifer calving difficulty. And if you're talking about dairy heifers, if you're under 7% in a highly reliable sire, um, that ICBF of that class is as low risk. So if you, uh, if you tap into the sire, our sires and ICBF, you will see that ICBF have them um, rated low risk, medium risk, and high risk. And all the bulls we promote for maiden heifers are low risk bulls. They're over 90% reliable because we have an awful lot of records on them. So just Gabriel Pat here now is an example, super bull, 6.5% calving difficulty. He's minus 2.7 days in gestation. So we're talking about gestation. We need a minus and the bigger the minus, the better. So he's nearly minus three days in gestation. Carcass weight plus nine kilos. and over 800 calving records there on dairy heifers. Now compare that to the breed average at the bottom. Um, the dairy heifer calving difficulty is much less than the breed average. The gestation is much shorter. The carcass kilos is higher. So, so, so John, you're absolutely right. We are finding bulls now that are easier calving, shorter gestation with higher carcass weight. <laughs> Thanks, Rose, for saying me, because I know you're doing all the work, but I'll take some of the credit with you. I'm, I'm okay to do that. But, Rose, like there, um, like the records are good there. At 8.1% national average, you were saying a minute ago, it has to be under 7 for dairy heifers. Is that correct? Yes. So the bulls we have for dairy heifers are under 7, but really, really high reliability. We, do, we, we will never promote bulls for maiden heifers if we don't have over 90% reliability on them. So, so if I was buying a stock bull, and I'm not, look, I don't, I don't turn into AI versus stock bull conversation, but if I was buying a stock bull or buying a, even an AI straw and say, that's average. You know, like, how's the Angus for calving difficulty? I, he's average. It's too much. Average is too much with an Angus. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have really, I suppose I wouldn't have known that. I would have said, yeah, Angus, easy calving, but that's not the case, is it? Not always. We get variation within the breed. Um, but the big thing here is the bulls are tested, so we know exactly, we, we, we have the evidence of what, what exactly they'll do at farm level. Mm. And a lot of evidence. So just go through the panels, um, and I will just go through a sample of sires tonight. I'm not going to go through all the sires we have available, because we have an awful lot of sires available. So just as a sample of bulls now, we've been for dairy heifers. Um, Gabriel Pat is just absolutely phenomenal. He's got the calving is, he's got the gestation, he's got the carcass. Basically, he's a bull you can't go wrong with, and he's fully, fully proven. Equally then, if we talk about Angus for cows, and again, this is just a sample of what we have available, but the four bulls I've pictured there are the four top bulls available today to put on your dairy cows. So just starting with um, Lord Teresio, very interesting bull, 3.4% in dairy cows, um, which is absolutely fine. Um, if you're talking about cows, you know, 3.4% means that on 100 cows, you'll have to assist three of them. That's effectively what that three or three and a half of them, 3.4% means. He's minus two and a half days in gestation. And this bull is plus 14 kilos in carcass weight. So you're really well ahead of the Stevens top performer there um, at plus nine kilos. So very interesting ball, just he's got it all for cows. Again, high carcass records. Just in relation, like he's, he's big too in the soccer scene as well, um, Rose. And sometimes you would have the perception there just because just you're using for dairy beef, they're probably not good enough for sucklers. But like all these bulls are very popular too on the suckler scene. Is that correct? 
Oh, absolutely. And, and in pedigree herds, um, Lord Horatio will be getting a lot of usage um, with pedigree breeders that want to produce bulls for the dairy, uh, for the dairy market. Other bulls then, Turbid Moore Toomey is a new bull we tested last year. The calves have hit the ground. He's really looking very, very interesting because at the moment he's only 2% calf in difficulty. Um, we've over 200 records there now on cows. Very, very interesting bull and 14 kilos in carcass weight. Again, that's double the breed average, which is seven kilos. Tower Tommy, the third bull on the list, He's actually the number one of bull available on DBI. He's the top bull there. We rank our bulls on the beef sub index. Um, under 3% in dairy cow calving difficulty, very short gestation at minus three and a half days, plus 16 kilos in carcass weight. And then yes. finally, Kool and Patriarch, which is the bull that um, Stephen talked about earlier on. That was the bull that, that was the top performer on the um, ABP farm in 2022. So coming back to the first slide, we have calving ease, we have the short gestation, and we have the carcass. So it is all, all achievable with the right genetics. Now, when you're selecting from our panels, just to make it easy, if you look at the far right column, use on, that will give you a good idea as to where to use these bulls. So if, you're, if you have second calvers, you know, or like cows that you're worried about, use the second calver bulls and those. On your cows, you can work away with the cow bulls. And then there's only one Angus there that we're saying for mature cows, who's Treebridge Powys. And he's 4.9% um, in calving difficulty. So there's a great range of Angus bulls available there for second calvers and cows with very, very high carcass weights. Herefords. Um, we have the number one Herefords available. And the other thing um, that's interesting about our Herefords is most of the Hereford bulls we have available are homozygous cold. And you'll see that in the name. If you see double two capital P's after the name, that will tell you they're homozygous cold. If you come down to Nomad. Please, Which means in plain English, Rose means. Means in the plain, plain English, the calves will not have horns. There's no need to dehorn them. Okay. Um, the bulls that don't have peas after them are horned bulls, um, so they will grow horns. And then Barwise One Nomad is the only bull there that is heterozygous, so he's capital P, small p. So half of them, half of the calves will come horned, half of them will come pole. Uh, and gold rush there as well. Gold rush as well, sorry. Yeah, yes. Yeah, by test yeah. Board, yeah. So just again, I'll just talk about a sample of our bulls because we have a lot of very good quality bulls available. So if you take the bull Zaro there, um, he's only 3.1% calving difficulty on cows, which is, you know, you'll assist three cows in 100. Um, 0.6 in gestation. So basically they'll calve on time at half a day more. Um, and very, very good carcass weight, plus eight kilos in carcass weight. So very, very interesting bull. The other interesting bulls there at the bottom are um, Fisher One Profile. Again, excellent in calving yeast, 3.5%, minus two and a half days in gestation, and plus six kilos in carcass. Nomad, he's a heterozygous bull, but he's a very, very good bull in carcass weight. Again, he's plus eight kilos in carcass. So looking at the gestations, the bulls with the big minuses after them, they're very interesting bulls to use from week four on. The bulls with zero or a slight plus, you can use them from the start of the season. So there's Zaro, he just ticks all the boxes, like his calving, his um, gestation, his carcass. Aubrac, again, just a sample of the sires we have available. Uh, Turbric Moore Magnificent is one of the best bulls available anywhere. He's super 3.6% calving difficulty. Um, pretty much calf on time and gestation, plus 18 kilos in carcass. So you're really getting into high carcass animals here. And remember, if you don't have carcass kilos, you won't have a lot to sell because kilos is what we're paid off. 
A shorter gestation option is Mount Cain on D. Um, he's minus the day in gestation. Magnificent is the number one proven Aubrac um, available in Irish AI today. Blues, um, we have a very good selection of blues available. The bull that really, really stands out is uh, BB7278, Elk236. And why is he so interesting? He's interesting because he basically ticks all the boxes. He's only 6.6% calving difficulty. Now we've put, we put all our blues down for mature cows um, because you do need to get beyond the second calver stage before you start using uh, blues. But a 6.6% blue is an easy calving blue. Um, very good in gestation, minus two days in gestation and very good in carcass weight, 14 kilos. So L236 is really the bull that can, it ticks all the boxes. High breed, um, the second bull picture there is um, again, good on calving. He's 7.9%, um, which on mature cows is not a difficult calving blue, super, super quality calves. So if you're really going for high quality blues, high breed is the bull to go for. And finally, Steph, the bull on the right, He's coming up, he's a bull we tested last year. He's coming up excellent in calving now as well, only 6.7%, good in gestation and very nice quality. And I'm just presenting the figures here tonight, but there's an awful lot of other things we always look at in our dairy beef program. For example, um, the color of the calves is something that's really important because it's important in the marketplace. So that's something we pay a lot of attention to. The other thing we pay a lot of attention to is how lively the calves are at birth how good they are at sucking. So all of those things are things that we take into account. And the bulls we present in our catalogs and the bulls we promote are the bulls that are good on those uh, qualities as well. Um, if we test a bull and we find they're sleepy calves, we don't promote those bulls. Um, so we, we're really uh, promoting bulls that are really work for the dairy herd owner, um, no issue calving, short gestation, easy to manage, they'll come out, they have the ability to live, they have the will to live, um, good colour, good marketable calves. So our yeah. programme is really about putting that whole package you're, you're, together. You're very big into that, aren't you? Rose, like, uh, it's grand having them lovey-dovey on a piece of paper, but when they're born on the ground, they're doing the job, like they're getting up, they're suckling, they're living, they're thriving, they're delivering results for both dairy farmer, definitely the beef farmer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and also the other thing, John, is balanced bulls because um, an extreme easy calving bull is not that interesting if the quality is rubbish. An extremely short gestation bull is not that interesting if the quality is rubbish. Equally, a super quality uh, bull is not that interesting if he's too difficult calving. So we're really trying to strike that balance of um, getting it all right, getting the calving, getting the gestation and getting the quality right. Um, so it's just all about getting, getting the balance and you can really get that balance right if you um, use the appropriate bulls depending on the parity of the cow. Maiden heifers, second calvers, cows and mature cows. And then you can really maximize the quality of your calf cow. So just to finish up, um, we, we have all breeds available for the dairy herd. So, you know, I've covered the main ones, Angus and Hereford are the big ones, and then Blue, then Aubrac. Um, we also have Super Limousine available for the dairy herd. And the most interesting bull there at the moment is Powerful Proper, because he's very good on gestation, and he's good in calving, and he's nice quality. In Charlie, we've two very interesting bulls there. Lapan is one, and Orby is the second one. And most of you that would be using Charlie in the dairy herd will be familiar with Lapan, but Orby is coming up very, very easy calving now um, in his next um, in his next evaluation the, in, in May. Um, you'll see that Orby is actually easier calving than Lapan now. So two very, so very you, interesting bulls. When you say the next um, the next evaluation, you have more than the five records that's there. You, you've seen a lot more than that. That's what you're basing it on. That he's yes, we have. So the, the, the official index comes out every two months. Um, but we get updated records from ICBF this time of year, every couple of weeks. So uh, they're not official, we don't publish them, but it's still um, very, very useful information for us 
um, to um, to understand the level of carbon difficulty of the bulls we tested last year. And Orby is one of those bulls. Yeah. And then finally, um, we also have good selection of Simmental and Salers for the dairy herd. And um, then uh, breeds like Speckle Park and Wagyu we have available as well. So John, um, just to finish up, um, what our program is all about is ticking the boxes for the dairy farmer from the point of view of calving ease, short gestation and getting a good quality calf and then highly fertile semen. So yeah. it's, it's, it's really important um, for dairy herd owners to keep AI um, right into the season because then you'll really make sure that you get the maximum amount of your cows and calf and you'll get them in calf to the right bulls. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, um, that's a nice, nice picture to finish on there, Rose. Um, like, that was a big part too of your presentation there was, there's a lot of records because it's, um, you know, it's granted to say it's really short gestation, really easy calf and bull, and then there's no records behind it. So, you know, like as you say, you have to have, you have to do your tests and we all have to take our responsibility in testing young, our young bulls coming through. But I suppose don't be fooled into using a lot of test bull semen. Uh, when it's not proven, especially around easy carbon, because <laughs> you use one bull that uh, was easy carbon, turns out to be half hard carbon, half the farmer will know about it, and he'll know about it. I'll get the call too. Like it's very, very important to balance that risk as well, isn't it? It absolutely is. And if you're looking, if you're looking at two bulls side by side, make sure you look at the at the records as well, because a bull could have two bulls could have exactly the same carbon difficulty figure. But one of them, like Gabriel Pat, might have 7,000 records and the second guy might only have 10 records. Yeah. Well, with Gabriel Pat, if there's 7,000 records there, you're damn sure that he's going to do exactly what the figure says. If there's yeah, only 10 what... records, that's a predicted figure. We have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the, the more records, hey, just get what it says on the tin and look, we all have enough to do in the springtime without taking risks and having hard calves enough to be the night. Says no one wants to be up, <laughs> whatever about being up in the middle of the night pulling a, a Belgian blue. No one wants to be up in the middle of the night pulling an Angus calf, eh? Yeah, any um, calf, any calf. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, have a look at the calving difficulty. Make sure you have high records, especially if you're talking about dairy maidens. Um, you know, and uh, use highly reliable sires, which we have an abundance of. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So I'll leave it at that, um, John. I'll um, I'll take questions. No, Fallon. No, you did well there. Now you kept it at uh, twenty minutes, and uh, I think uh, Stephen Connolly was twenty minutes as well. And uh, I think we said today we're supposed to be about fifteen minutes long. But as uh, Jones in production reminded me, if I used to shut up during the presentations, we probably would do them on time. So look, I'm not going to I'm not going to accuse anyone for that. So um, look, we'll uh, bring Shane Shane Lean back in and Stephen Connolly back in. And um, yeah, we might just tip in there. We have a couple of questions after coming in there. So um, first question here, how does a farmer select beef sires for the dairy herd? And what are the important traits to select on? No, what? I'm going to spread that around a bit. Rose, you go first. Well, um, the really important trait is calving ease um, because you know we don't want any trouble. We don't want um, to compromise on the dairy herd profitability. So calving ease is really important. Look at the dairy heifer figure if you're looking at for bulls for maiden heifers. Look at the dairy cow figure if you're looking at bulls for cows. Um, next, gestation length. Um, zero, pretty much calve on time. Then the bigger the minus, the shorter the pregnancy. So from week four of the season, go for those short gestation bulls. And we have bulls there minus three and a half days in gestation now. Um, if you take Gabriel Pat, Turbid Mortumi, Tower Tommy, um, they're all minus three and a half days in gestation. And then in the Her Herefords, you have Fisher One Profile as well, minus three and a half days in gestation. And you have L236, who's minus two and a half days in gestation. So short gestation, especially from week four of the season. And then look at the carcass weight and the beef sub index, because that's ultimately what we get paid. Um, for either at the mart or at the factory. And if we're talking about um, 
rules of thumb from the pound to carcass kilos. Um, I would say minimum five or six kilos, but most of our bulls there are um, nine kilos and plus, even the bulls from maiden heifers. And especially yeah. if you're using bulls and cows and mature cows, you'll find bulls there between 10, right up to 25 kilos in carcass weight. So um, Steve, I didn't say a farmer wants to go join the ABP. Is there anything that the bulls need to have any kind of a quality assurance behind them or anything like that? Yeah, look, I suppose, look for, I suppose if you look at uh, the Advantage programme, like to, to receive the bonus next year, um, I suppose we have a minimum genetic merit standard. So um, at the at the minute, that's a minimum sub, uh, of the B sub index, a minimum standard of the B sub index of 35 euro. Um, that's and that was based on the old version. So yeah, they have to. If they're not above thirty five euro, it's not sired from a beef bull that has a beef sub index above thirty five euro, they won't qualify. Look, that's basically basically it. Like, but maybe just to go back, John. If you might just on 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 selecting the bulls, like I think it is really important. And maybe Shane might jump in there. Um, like getting, I think the dairy farmer selecting the selecting that bull based on whatever he's comfortable with calving difficulty, and then selecting John you know, wants the highest carcass. But I think a team of bulls is really important. I'm sure dairy farmers were used to that uh, on the dairy side, like sort of. So I suppose it's getting to that mindset change, like not just use, even if you want to dip your toe and use, uh, Joe, you said about using a bull and potential hard calf. I think using a team of bulls is, is really, really important. I think. I know, Shane, you want to comment on that, John? Yeah. So, Shane, are, are you seeing, Shane, like conversation changing with farmers, like on what they're selecting from their beef calves? Yeah, look, it definitely. Are beef bulls? What Stephen has said there, it's um, you know, the, the scene has kind of changed with dairy farmers. Traditionally, we'll be we be always just picking one or two bulls and Angus and a herd and that be it. But we we've moved into Nero where we're, we are selecting teams. I think the team is very important as we're we're used to it in the dairy for generating dairy replacements, but I think it's even as important now in the dairy beef side as well, because you know you're you're dealing with different parities of animals that you, you want to breed to, and, and as Rose has outlined about within the panels, which you can see. You know, the suitable bulls for second calvers, the suitable bulls for, for mature cows, and then you have suitable bulls for your maiden heifers as well. So I think it's it's a combination of things. To be fair, Rosa summed it up fairly well. Calving ease is, is definitely number one from a dairy farmer's perspective. Gestation also, depending on what stage the, the breeding season he's at or she's at. And then obviously the, the carcass weight is, the, is a big one. And Stephen kind of really outlined or drove that message clearly home um, in terms of the difference that that can make to the, to the beef finisher. Um, in terms of the, the genetic merit, in terms of carcass weight for for that calf, so it's you know it's it's a combination of things to be fair, but um you know there's there's definitely more merit in using a team of bulls um across parties. Yeah, yeah, understand. Just back to you, Stephen, there, and that the minimum for beef sub index is thirty five, is it? Yeah, that was based on the old. That was based on the old one, John. So that was when we put that out. The, the indexes have changed now, so. Really, what we'd be saying to our farmers that on the beef sub index you want to be using over a hundred, a hundred euros. But again, back to Rose's point, uh, you'd want to be using them bulls a minimum eight, ten kilos of carcass weight. That's what we'd be telling our farmers. Like, so let's use the calf. If you're buying, buying, but say calves, so look from with a high beef sub index, at least over a hundred, and look for a high carcass. So the higher the better. Like you've seen Horatio, there's fourteen. You're not going to get everyone at that, but if you can get eight, nine, ten kilos, that's what we'll be kind of, kind of looking at uh, across the beef, beef like sort of. So, and again, I think uh, Rose mentioned a point: balance. Is that a balanced bull like that? He is easy calving with good beef traits, and I know Shane, that's something important when you're selecting bulls for the the dairy side on the EBI. That he's not all high fertility and no solids. It's yeah. it's exactly the same. It's balance. That's really want. Yeah, it's an important thing because uh, you know we. We can get caught up in the highest DBI bull, but to be honest with you, it only gets you so far. And I think it's it's heavily weighted on calving, so it's it's very important that you get that balance on beef sub index, carcass weight, um, and that will breed you know a, a very saleable calf, and it'll also breed a calf for the for the finisher to to make a profit on as well. So yeah, it's definitely balance is, is key in the whole thing. Yeah. So um, like and the interesting thing is, I, like, I, I love to see the demographic of who's joined this webinar because. For, for the dairy farmer, you know, they need to start the station, they need the, the calving ease, all that. The beef farmer needs, or the beef farmer wants a good animal there at the end of it. And, and like, I suppose the beef farmer, beef farmer can't control what the dairy farmer does. Sometimes the dairy farmer feels like he doesn't get fairly rewarded. But it's early days, yeah, for he's, he's beef calf, so it's interesting. But what does the commercial beef value then mean for the dairy farmer? Well, Shane? Yeah. 
Yeah, so look, it's look at it's new, it's it's coming on stream to be fair. Um again, as Stephen kind of said earlier on, you know, when national genotyping comes out, you know, it'll be it'll be really to the forefront of, of every farmer's vision in terms of the mark boards and that. But I suppose what it means for dairy farmers, it's it's increasing the value of the calf that he's producing. Um, and that's you know, it's it's probably more heavily weighted towards the, the beef farmer in terms of buying or you know purchasing these calves. Um, so it's it's really an index for the dairy farmer to breed an optimum CBD value calf. And that therefore then for the, the beef farmer to easily identify, you know, what is the, the highest genetic merit beef calves that they can they can purchase. Um, and then you know that that should come with reward for the dairy farmer because he has gone to the effort of breeding that calf. And it also would come with reward for the beef farmer because you know he has a, a more efficient animal that can that can grow faster, that can you know put on weight quicker, um, can be more carbon efficient, and you know can be really a higher quality animal at the end of the day when he is finishing it. So I think it has it has a, it has a number of wins to be fair for the dairy farmer, but also has a, a big win for the for the, the finisher as well. Uh, I think John, it's it's a game it's a game changer. Like it will the farmer that's doing it's already using them bulls. He's going to be rewarded, and it gives the beef farmer that bit of comfort that John when he could he, either he goes into a mart goes into a farm, John he has the data to, to back it up and, and look the genotype and will will do that like so so I, I personally it's a game changer and, and it will change that mindset shift like if you look on the supper side 10 years ago would you think any of us would be buying we'll say replacement heifers on four or five stars uh, no one no one would have said we were we are now like so I think that's where it's going that's where it's all going going to CBV national genotype and so that's that's going to be the next shift like and I suppose for dairy farmers can I be slightly ahead of my competition which is my neighbor down the road that I can breed a higher CBV animal, Joe, that have that more marketable calf like so. Yeah. I think, John, to be fair, we are seeing that, you know, and definitely progressing. I'm sure you're the same, Munster. You know, we've, we've seen the, the dairy farmer putting more emphasis on the type of, type of um, the straws that they're using to breed that better calf, to be fair. And rightly so, you know, when it's, when you're AI and it's as easy to pick a good straw, as you said earlier, than pick a bad straw. So, you know, it, it makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah, you're... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but also, if, if you look at what's available, you know, for for the guy that um, just rings up his AI man, he, he doesn't really have to think much anymore because what the AI man has in the tank is all high carcass bulls anyway. You know, so the so with the with, with the program, um, if it's a monster technician or a progressive technician, what's automatically going to be pulled out of the tank is a high carcass sire. Um, with calving ease and with short gestation, so it's it's uh, it's 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 easier for hair donors now. Um, we don't have low carcass bulls in our tanks; they're not there. Oh, and even, that's interesting, Ross, because we do have a couple of bulls that rank very high and the DBI, but they're not in the catalogue because they don't have the carcass weight. Like that's that's, right. that's a change. That's a change in mindset, isn't it? Too. It, it is a change, but it comes back to um, balanced bulls. Um, and the DBI is just one figure. Um, and, and while it's useful to sometimes to just shortlist bulls, um, it's very difficult to put everything we need from a dairy beef animal into one figure. So we really have to drum down into the detail. Um, so when we are selecting the bulls to go into the technician's tanks, it is balanced bulls. So we might find a bull that might come up really high in the DBI, because it's extreme on calving ease. Um, but if it's not good enough on carcass, we don't make them available. Okay. So the decision is is um, the decision is made for the herd owners, you know what I mean? If they um, if they use the PG and um, monster technician service, they will automatically have high carcass bulls. Okay. Okay. So um yeah, so that's a, we kind of had that there. What is the minimum carcass weight of a beef sire I should select? I'm saying minimum, I would say five kilos. Okay. Um, let me see, the five kilos. Minimum, minimum, minimum. Mm. We've plenty of bulls there between 10 and 25 kilos. Yeah, because I kind of, yeah, yeah. I would have, yeah, yeah. I, I would have gone higher looking at the catalog. But anyway, I see you with your rose, you know. Um, and then confirmation then, Rose. Yeah, carcass confirmation is an important trait as well. Um, but we need the kilos first. So mm. you know what I mean? Um, for simplicity's sake, tonight you just focused on um 
the carcass weight and the beef subindex. Stephen. Carcass confirmation, um, the higher the figure, the greater the grade. And does so, that come true in the factory, Stephen? Yeah, we we would we would see that like so. And again, it differs for so your your Angus will have a different figure than than your limousine. So I would agree that you can get the higher the, the higher the better. But I'd go first, uh, go with your car go with your carcass weight figure first, like so. And, it's, uh, and look for your Angus if they're up at 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, you're doing you're doing well. Like, but look, go with carcass weight and, and fair. Most of the bulls in there are around that 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 on on the Angus and the Hereford. Yeah. Um, I'll, throw, I'll throw this one at you, Shane. Uh, what beef bulls should I use on my crossbred cows to maximise calf value? So I, I'm assuming the crossbred cows are Jersey cross cow, cows. Yeah, so look, it's, it's, I suppose there's, there's plenty of options. Um, I suppose the crossbred farmer typically wants to change the, the look of the calf more so than looking at the, I suppose, the genetics. But I suppose it's important that, uh, you know, we, we select the genetic marital, we've outlined the carpus wage, the beef index, calf difficulty is, is important. But... We we have plenty of farmers that are using Belgian blues on um on crossbred cows and getting on you know very well to be fair in terms of getting a, a saleable calf. So you know there's there's plenty of options. You, if if Hereford's profile fish profile has definitely been used um on crossbred cows and producing decent calves as well. Um, but then I, we would have a lot of farmers using Belgian blues um on them crossbred cows and getting on the finest in terms of calving difficulty. The likes of Elk and Step are are really good options on on mature crossbreds. You know, there's there's no issue in terms of calving difficulty, um, and you're you're getting a decent calf as well, which is is saleable. So, you no, know, there there is options to be fair, um, for for that market as well. Mm, okay, well, good stuff. How reliable is the calving figure on the beef sires? We kind of touched on that, but do you want to recap on that, Rose, quickly? Yeah. So every time there's a calving figure, there's a reliability figure beside it. So the reliability of the calving figure. Um, is is whatever the reliability is of the calving figure. Um, and that the higher the reliability, the more records that are available in the dairy herd. So, so is, is 80% good enough? 80% um, reliability? If, if we're talking about dairy maiden heifers, we're all always over 90%. Um, okay. We're not happy until we're sure, sure the spull is safe for dairy heifers. Yeah. Okay, so over 90%. Um, if you're talking about dairy cows, um, we're over 85%. But we've plenty of bulls there that are well over 90% reliable. Like we know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. So every time you look at a calving figure, look at the reliability as well. Fair enough. Okay. Um, what other beef breeds can be used besides Angus and Hereford. So I suppose we saw the Angus and Hereford. Shane, what would you see farmers going to next after the Angus and Hereford? Um, I suppose within PG, we're, we're, again, I said it, uh, Belgian Blues are, are becoming very popular and have came back on scene as of the last couple of years. Um, but then we're, we're seeing limousine, uh, Charlie's. I suppose the advantage now is was when, um, when herds have kind of got to where they want to be with numbers, they're being a little bit more selective in terms of, of breeding. Um, and they have identified their cows for beef earlier in the season. I suppose that gives an opportunity then that you can use different gestation bulls um, from the, the day one of the breeding season. And that's where you're seeing your, your I suppose, your limousine, your Charlies, um, even Aubrac. Aubrac is, is getting very popular. That bull, Magnificent, that rose outline is, um, is a very popular bull with us. And he's moving very well, to be fair. Um, and then, you know, you're, you're probably the tail end of your, your breeding season. You see the, the Angus, traditional breeds, the Angus and the Herefords um, are being used still. And look, they are still in high demand, the, the Hereford and the Angus. But uh, we would see a, a big increase in, in Belgian blue limousine um, and Charlie's, but being used at different times of the year. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's not just at the, the latter six weeks of the breeding season now, it's from, from day one, which is, uh, which is an important thing. And, you know, farmers are increasing their calf value of the calves that have been born in February versus the traditional calves that are born after Paddy's Day. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good yeah. thing. And I suppose using it from day one is popular there where lads are using sex semen. And we spoke about before we came on here, Stephen asked the question how we get on with sex. And like having the second lab up there in NCBC has really helped us, you know, be able to have plentiful supply of the top quality bulls. And I suppose with that, people are using more beef. And like we're on the last night on the webinar where we're talking about, you know, the beauty of the beef straw is the more beef you use, the better the quality of your dairy replacements are, which is a, a different way of looking at things. And like, if you're if you're only going to have a hundred cow herd, you have twenty replacements coming through, and they're coming from six. You're 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 breeding from the very top of your 
your animals, you're really, you're probably, I think you looked at there, you're skipping about five years um, of breeding. You know, your genetic gain is having that interval. But yeah. that other 80 calves, then there's a real opportunity there for, um, you know, to create a really good, valuable crop. And usually people then with the use sex, they're using it on younger stock. They might be using heifers and maybe second, third lactation. But you have those older, mature cows. And then it's used picked on rows. Like you have Belgian blue there. You have the Anguses there that are suitable for more mature cows. Cargus weight of 20. You know, you're, you're winning everywhere, really. Like you're getting more better quality calves and you're getting better quality replacements. And it's very unusual to make a decision in breeding where you can have win-win here and a win-win there. Mm. It's very unusual. But like, with sex, and now that like top bulls there, plenty of them going around, everyone's happy out. Like you could still now come in and you're using a bit of beef there. So it's it's creating a real win. And then from like from day one, you're doing it. You know, the calves are making better money in February as well. And it's also that beef straw. When the Angus comes out, there's no temptation to keep her and milk her. You know, I suppose if you put in a, a dairy straw and it comes out and you're like, oh, I wasn't going to keep her, but look, I'll keep her now. You know, you're really keeping that uh, selection pressure really on your herd improvement. So it's, it's a real winner. Like, so like, grand, use the beef straw and keep the beef farmer happy, but it's really drives on your own herd improvement for your dairy replacements. And I hope that's my rant. To, <laughs> my John, and there's, a, there's a massive opportunity to maximize the quality of the calf crop if you use higher carcass sires as, as the cows get more mature. Mm -hmm. And also to think beyond the breed, because sometimes people have in their head, you know, Angus is here and... Hereford is here and limousine is here or whatever we pre we've um we've got ideas about breeds but just look at the figures so if you decide i want to stay under whatever it is four percent in dairy cow cabin difficulty you'll find plenty of bulls in angus hereford aubrac and limousine under that yeah. level and you can compare the figures like it, uh, a four percent bull regardless of the breed is a four percent bull yeah. So I would really urge people to look at the figures as opposed to have preconceived ideas in our heads about breeds. Uh, I and think that's a really... You know what I mean? Um, if, you're, if you decide, right, I'm going to stick with eight kilos, um, you will find bulls superior to eight kilos right across the breeds. Um, so really look at the figures as opposed to have assumptions about breeds. That's one thing we've really, really learned with our crossbreed evaluations. I'd I'd agree I'd agree with that. I think that's really important. Like, you know, select select the best within within the breed, whatever whatever that is, whether it's carcass or, or calving, like sodas, and you know, select a, a bull that you know that your that your customer wants, like sodas. If he's buying Angus or buying Hereford, you know, or buying Belgian Blues, like that's important. Like, what does what does he or she want to buy off you in twenty twenty four, like sodas? Um, um, I think that's really, really, really important. Like, so having that conversation, I think, is is important, and probably now is the time to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose I, I, I don't. I don't want to draw you into it. But there's a question here: Is there a reason Charlie did not make it into cows? Uh, bar for the trial, Stephen. Uh, no, reason? God, no. Good, good, good question. Good question, John. Look, uh, we put we put through everything through the farm. Charlie, limousine, Belgian blue, stabilizers, you name it. They've all went through it. But we wouldn't have put through a huge amount of of Charlies. But with that being said, they have so. We don't mind what goes through the farm so it is uh, what we want to find is the best uh the best within within the breed like so it is and look i know some farmers might like to use a charlie because of calving but there's other farmers that do to, to maximize the, the the calf value and for some farmers don't no, there's someone in very easy calving charlies the likes of the crossfit cows could definitely play a role like so no we're open to all all breeds john okay uh, this this is probably a bit of a comment, but uh, I might get a couple of opinions off you. It's it's one thing to convince a dairy farmer to get the beef farmer to give us the extra twenty euros. It is another thing. Uh, is it to give us? But to get the beef farmer to give us an extra twenty euros for the calf is another thing. As most calves are sold at the mart, and in there they want them as cheap as you can get them. I can see them working well if you finish in your own. Then yeah, that works. But beef farmers are slow to take up new systems. Look how look at how many are against the stars, and they're the most vocal. I think the answer is probably in that comment in itself: is you take them to the mart and you won't get the money. Don't take them to the mart. No, it's an interesting Thanks. comment. But if we look at where we're heading in Ireland now, in a couple of years, we're likely to have whole herd genotyping, and with that, we will have the commercial beef index, which is basically the. Uh, 
how profitable that beef calf is. So um, at the mark, the commercial beef index will be available and that will be the, the genetics of the calf, both the dam and the sire. We're just talking about bulls here tonight, um, but every calf has a mother, as we all know. So the commercial beef value will really, really solve that problem to decide how valuable is that calf. And the, the higher the beef sub-index, the more valuable the calf will be. Um, so, and, 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 that, and that is an important point that um, uh, whole herd genotyping is coming. And with it is the commercial beef index, which will be up on the mark boards. Yeah, I'm sure. Look, hey, look, look at EBA. What twenty years ago, it wasn't going to work. <laughs> look, unless it's still tell you today, it's not working. Whatever it is, but people have bought into it, and it is working. And it probably it's along the same lines as this. To have to buy into the figures, and it is working. Um, so Stephen, I, you're, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah what I jump in, what I jump into that is, is I would say there is an appetite there, uh, and and I know it's like the EBI people are against it now. They are, but there is. Uh, we ran a project, uh, a project and pilot this year. And we we didn't we actually needed more dairy farmers. Uh, we had more beef farmers wanting cat to buy calves of the high genetic merit. So and I honestly feel the likes with the advantage program, uh, Joe, the genotype and the CBV, that's going to grow, go and grow like so it's um and look, it's look, we what we really want is is that relationship that it's it's what's important that you want everyone has to be fair. Fair price for the calf, obviously, reward the one that has the high genetic merit and penalize the other one. So um, so I think that's really, really important point. But like, so it's, there needs to be a win for the dairy farmer is using that right genetics, uh, and he does need to be rewarded for it. But penalised if he's not. And look, again, it's it's the has to be wins for both. Joe, that he comes every Saturday. That you know that he comes when the beef farmer comes when he says he's going to come, and that you know when he's going to take your calves. Like because I use a team of you know high index Angus or her for Belgian blue, whatever. Like so, I suppose it's it probably shouldn't be all jump. You know, it should be all down to the. the the total price, he gets a fair price, but um, I think that's that's important. Like, because working working together is more important. Like, so that's my that's my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. Look, it, it's um it's a fair comment from on the, in the question, but uh, you know, I think you have to start somewhere, um, and you have to change. No one likes change, but you know, as you said, the EBI 20, 30 years ago was at a, a different place as well. Look at where it has got to. Um, so I, I don't think it's a it's it's something to fear. I think it can only be good for for dairy farmers and beef farmers. Um, and again. It, as Stephen has outlined, you know, it has to be fair across the board for everybody. And once everyone is gaining from it, you know, it's a win-win situation. Percent. <clears throat> uh, does the index and the carcass weight hold true irrespective of the breed of the dairy dam? Rose, I'll give you that one. Yeah, so, um, so if we are looking at the indexes of sires, what that will tell us is the genetic potential of the progeny of those sires. Okay, so then it, it depends then, the performance of those sires, of course, will depend on the dams. So if, if the dams are, have higher carcass weight, then obviously the progeny would have higher carcass weight. If the dams have lower carcass weight, um, the progeny will have lower carcass weight. But, um, when you're looking at the index of the sires, um, we've the benefit in, in Ireland of having um, the ICBF database. So all the data comes in, out from the dairy herd and from the suckler herd, and we get a massive amount of records. So the indexes are correct, but the performance of the progeny will depend on the um, quality of the dams as well. Okay. Both so, so of those will come together with commercial beef index. And just to jump in there from, from the trial farm, John, what we find is the, the progeny from the high index sires, irrespective if they're off a crossbred cow or a black and white cow, the high index, if they're a high, from a high index sire, on average, they will have higher performance. So especially when they're a high reliability, reliability um, from high reliability bull. Sorry, I got a bit tongue twisted there. Like, so um, so it, does, it does stack up. Like, so it does. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Um, is there an interbreed? Beef index. Rose, over to you on that one. There is. So um, if you punch any bull into ICBF, you will see um, you will see the index um, down the middle of the page, and then you will see the stars on the left, and you'll see stars on the right. So the stars on the left compares the particular bull you're looking at within its own breed. So if it's an Angus, and you're looking down the left-hand side of the page, it'll compare that Angus bull 
to the Angus population in Ireland. If you look at the right hand side of the page, it will compare that Angus bull to the full beef population. So that's okay. the across breed evaluation. Okay. And also then, because we have a cross breed evaluation, if we're looking at any sire and it's plus 10 kilos in carcass, it doesn't matter if it's an Angus or Hereford or a Charlie, that's what it will deliver for us. So we do have a cross breed evaluations in Ireland. Okay. And we're very unique in that. All right. Look, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, contributing there this evening. I suppose my take takeaway is first of all, like Stephen, really impressed in that figure. Like, like you buy a calf and you had those three calves in the pen and really looked, there was nothing in between them. But when you look at the genetics behind them and what that could leave on a farm for a beef farmer, like it's like it's real money. Like it's it's a better holiday, it's clearing your debt, it's paying off the tractor, it's deciding to work three days a week instead of five days a week. It's real money, it's really. And you're not asking a guy to put a magic bullet in there, special minerals. You're just saying genetics, just better genetics and keep doing what you're doing, basically for that. Um, I really like that. Then I suppose, Rose, you covered then the balance of getting gestation lint, carcass, confirmation, and having it backed up with good records. So I really like that. And look, Shane, always valuable to have your input as well. It was good to see what the farmers are doing on the ground. So for the TV, uh, thank you very much. And I suppose as I like to end, I'd like to thank John C as well in production for putting it all together and making it happen. Uh, for everybody here tonight, put, sending in the questions, I really appreciate it. Um, other than that, thank you very much. Good evening. Very good. Thanks. Thanks Sam. Cheers. Bye. See you, everyone. Bye. -bye.